Well, hello and welcome to the Dunking. I'm Dan, and in this video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite YouTube channels, History for Granted. Now, this guy is not only extremely knowledgeable when it comes to the book smart side of it and the published works and whatnot, he's really well read on the pyramids. He's also really knowledgeable when it comes to having spent a lot of time looking at photographs and high definition footage of the pyramids at Giza and, and other pyramids as well, but those three in particular, like everyone else. And he knows quite a bit about them. And I really love the fact that he doesn't posit woo as a means for them to be mysterious, but he doesn't disregard the mystery and say, oh, well, there's nothing to see here. He recognizes that there's some weird stuff going on there, but he's not going to say, well, you know, I think that aliens flew down and built them, or I think that, you know, this was a, a product of high technology, which puts him right in firmly in the category of, of my neck of the woods when it comes to this stuff. So when I watch him, it's basically, it's, it's just for leisure. I learn things, but it's not like if I'm watching Dr. Miano's video, I'm looking for things to nitpick, right? I'm watching this video and I'm enjoying it. But in this, in this case, I found something that I was like, well, you know, I, I think that you kind of extrapolate a little bit too far here. I think you found something interesting, and I think that you kind of made a mountain out of a molehill of it. So I felt like I would respond to it, not like to be like, aha, gotcha, more like to show something that we can all do here because the pyramids are really mysterious, and we all, all of us that look at this stuff, we look close, we find things, and if we're not careful, we can extrapolate those into much more than they actually tell us. And I believe that that's exactly what happened in this case. So here we go. A favorite exercise of mine is finding an exceptional image of a pyramid complex and to just sit back and search for patterns or details that might easily be overlooked. These subtle clues can sometimes be profoundly revealing. And I want to share that experience with all of you in this channel's premiere video. Well, we should be fair to him right out the gate. This is his channel's premiere video. It's his first one. And my first video will also be something that's highly recommended. It's, if you look me up, it's not my best video, though, by a long shot. So I think we should give him a little leeway there. From here, we can inspect the entire top level. And it is from this view that I want to give you an opportunity to make the discovery for yourself. There is a secret embedded in these stones which reveals much about how the top of the pyramid was constructed, and perhaps even the entire monument. Pay close attention to the direction every stone is facing. Are they simply a jumble of roughly squared blocks, or is there a pattern to how they are laid out relative to one another? Here, at the flattened summit of the Great Pyramid, you will notice that the perimeter stones are all perfectly aligned to the superstructure, with their faces closely matching the cardinal directions laid out by the monument. But all of the inner stones are not quite so perfectly aligned. They all share a common clockwise turn by 5 to 10 degrees. It's very easy to see here with the stones highlighted in different shades and their joints emphasized by the lines in yellow. Well, you can see the guy's no slouch. You can see why he's got a successful channel. That's a pretty astute observation. Um, to me, there's a pretty obvious reason. I mean, I, I'd say it's apparent as to why this was done, and um, we're going to disagree on that, so let's go ahead and hear what he has to say. So, what does this alignment pattern tell us about the Great Pyramid? What reason could there be for having all of the inner stones turned slightly clockwise? Well, it suggests that when laying down the center, the perimeter blocks were obscured by a spiraling ramp, and that these middle stones were instead aligned to the ramp rather than the faces of the pyramid. Notice how each of the perfectly straight perimeter stones get deeper as they approach a corner, all in the same clockwise direction. The easiest way to line up roughly squared blocks is from an edge, and the inner stones are straight relative to the edge of a spiraling ramp, not the outer pyramid faces. This is very strong evidence that a spiral ramp structure was used at the top of the Great Pyramid, and any theory about the pyramid's construction should reflect the masonry design we see here. I would disagree to the point. I wouldn't just say this is not strong evidence for a ramp construction. I would say this is not evidence for ramp construction at all. Um, the workers would absolutely see these stones are crooked. Look, look at right here where they actually had to use spacers. And notice that how crooked these stones are from the ones on the perimeter. It doesn't matter if the ramp obscured that or not. When they went to butt those stones against each other, they would absolutely have noticed that this isn't squared. That's why there's spacers there. And no, this wasn't done accidentally. This was done to make it kitty wampus. Kitty wampus. Redneck construction term that means slightly askew. 
And basically the point of that is to make it where when you push on the side of these blocks, instead of just pushing them straight off the edge, you disperse the force and, and make it the blocks all kind of push themselves out and about. You've played Jenga before, you get what I'm talking about here, right? When you get to these top courses on the pyramid, those blocks are small enough that a person can push them off fairly easily accidentally if it was two or three people, especially a working crew, could easily knock these things off accidentally. Pushing one side could push the other side down, but if it made it all just kind of jigsaw, that's not going to be such an issue anymore. I don't really think that there's any way that there was anything that obscured their view here. I think they very deliberately made these crooked in order to make it a little bit more stable and secure. And I would go so far as to speculate that the further courses of masonry that are now missing on top were probably done in a similar manner. These, As the blocks get smaller, they're so much easier to dislodge, and having that force easily push the other ones off the side is, is a serious problem. Jigsawing it a little bit is about the best you can do in that situation with what they had at the time. And you know, History for Granite's a really smart guy when it comes to this stuff. I bet you he has probably would agree or at least had put this together as a strong possibility by now. I mean, on one of his videos about Mankari's pyramid, he has this to say. Imagine you were tasked with dismantling a large stone pyramid using only levers, wedges, cords, and cables. How would you go about doing this? Where might you begin the work? Don't think too hard because the solution is so obvious that any child could provide the answer. You would begin dismantling the pyramid from the very top. Attacking the problem this way would provide many advantages, including number one, the ability to move blocks that are not encumbered with weight from above nor obstructed from the sides. So obviously he recognizes the top of the pyramid is the weakest and easiest part to knock down. Accidental damage, I think, would be a serious consideration for the working crews that were putting the thing together. So obviously the pyramids are really mysterious, and guys like History for Granted are great in those regards because he doesn't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but he certainly throws the bathwater out, and I love that. He gives us a very even-keeled take most of the time, and most of the time I have to say that he either sends us in a proper direction or the most viable direction. At the very least, he doesn't send us pissing up a rope. He has a good idea of what he's talking about, and he's pretty nuanced and smart with it. Which is why I felt like it was kind of important to point this out, because this can happen to any of us. He, got, he knows way more about this stuff than me. But I, I do think that he missed something. I mean, I think Occam's razor really, really just chops this down. And, and he might not have a lot of experience with construction, so he might not recognize this is the kind of thing that you would like really quickly do. But if you can see these kinds of patterns in masonry all over the world for a really long time because it is, it's viable. It, it works. It, it, it holds it together better than just a simple square when it comes to not being heavily mortared into place. If you expect side, sh side loads to be pr pressed on it, you want it to shift, not just push straight out. Again, if you've played Jenga, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So remember, when you're doing your investigations and this stuff, or yourself, or myself, or any of us, it's, it can be pretty easy for us to see something and make more out of it than it actually is if we're not careful and put our pieces together properly. All right, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, go, you know, if you haven't already, I'm sure that you know who History for Granted is if you're watching me. But if you haven't, you absolutely need to go check that guy out. He knows way more about this shit than I do. Have a good evening. We will see you next time.